Okay, so I just got a message from one of the club members who was asking me what knots I prefer to use when I'm attaching flies to my tippet. And for me, it basically boils down to two knots. For me, I prefer to use a modified trilene knot if I don't need a loop for mobility, if I don't need to worry that my fly has a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of pivoting on my tippet. If I'm not going to worry about that, then I'm going to use a modified trilene knot. It cinches down nice and tight, and it's an extremely strong knot. It's the stronger of the two. The other knot that I prefer is a um, perfection loop with the knot tied in the bend. Um, that's very good for mobility, and it's also very good when you're trying to tie a fly on bite tippet that is particularly rigid. There's a brand of bite tippet called Not Too Kinky and it's a very rigid, very unyielding, almost spring wire like bite tippet. And the perfection loop is probably the better way of attaching a fly to that. So let's get straight to it. Um, I'm using this bright um, Moderna um, thread that one uses for some of the flies that uh, our uh, tying guru um, Davy McPhail uses for some of his flies. And I'm just going to use that because it'll come up nice and bright on the video. So first off with the perfection loop because I believe that was the fly that was asked about first. I'll give this some clean out. Stu, clean your eyes. So we're going to, normally you wouldn't be doing this part. I'm only doing this because I'm trying to use a very clear and visible um, material to emulate a tippet. So let's say for argument's sake, I have my fly on my tippet material. If I'm going to do the perfection loop, I put the fly on and then I tie the perfection loop as normal. I do my small loop at the top. It starts off as the small loop. And then at the bottom I have my larger loop. Now it doesn't look so much like a loop because the fly is pulling it down. But you've got the two loops. You've got the small loop at the top and you've got the larger loop at the bottom with the fly on it and then you pull the tag between the two loops. Now if you tied it now like this, this loop would be large and it would foul up on the material. If I were to tie this now, I would have problems. It's, it's not going to be an effective way. So what you want to do is you want to make this larger loop smaller. You also want to make the smaller loop larger so you can bring the fly through it. And you do that by pulling on the left side of the loop. You can see here, as I pull on this, this lower loop keeps getting smaller. If I pull on one side and the lower loop gets smaller, I'm doing it right. If I try pulling on the other side of that loop, it actually, I'll make sure that doesn't undo. If I pull on the other side, it actually gets the running line. I don't know if you can see this or not, but when I pull on the other side of the loop, it actually pulls the running line. You can see the running line moving now. Okay, We don't want that. We want to pull on the left side and it makes this lower loop smaller and smaller and smaller. So I keep pulling on the lower loop and then I bring my fly through. Okay. Now this material is great for visual representation of tippet material, but it's really clingy and it's not very rigid, so, um, but that's okay. And then once through, you can still make your loop smaller and smaller and smaller. And what I do is I make that loop almost as small as it can bear. And once I've got it done, I then start sliding down on my running line, the line that is the tippet you're keeping. I keep pulling and pulling and pulling until I get a nice tight.
tight loop. You wet. Of course you wet off camera. You're not going to show the world licking a knot. At least not without getting an age restriction on YouTube. And then you end up with a nice tight lot knot. You get your tag perpendicular. You can still see it right there. The tag is still perpendicular. You can even get a smaller loop than that. But now you've got a nice tight loop. So that's one way of doing it. And of course before you fish it, you would take your nippers and cut off the tag. So you have a nice small, there you go, nice small loop that really does hold tight. And that perfection knot is very, very strong. Okay? So that's one way of doing it, and then that gives you the mobility. The fly will move around and will not be constrained by the tippet material at all. Another way that I tie my knot on is to use what's called the modified trilene knot. The modified trilene knot is a little bit more complicated. I'll try and do this. It might be prohibitive, but we'll try doing it anyway. Might have to do this a little bit differently. The modified trilene is about double loops, all right? So you get one loop and then you pull it through again and you get another loop. So I've done my thread through once. I could, you know, I could start making a loop, but I'm going to pull, and I shouldn't have said thread, I should have said tippet. I've pulled my tippet through the eye once, and now I'm going to do it again. And just a reminder, you do not need to bring a bobbin threader with you on the water. I'm just using this so I can have some nice, good visibility. Okay? So, this is what you want to do. You want to have your tippet material going through your eye twice. Just like that. I'm going to come into focus. There it is. Okay? So I've pulled it through twice. Now, my tag is not very big. So if you have that and you don't have enough tippet material to tie the fly, you can give yourself a little bit more by pulling on one side of the loop so it picks up the running line and then you can pull your tag again so that you have much more material to tie with. Now that I have this done, I've got the loop here. I'm going to pinch and hold that, but I'm going to try and keep part of my loop visible. Maybe make it a little smaller, okay? So that I've got it held, but I want to be able to wrap my tippet five times. So you just start wrapping. It doesn't really matter which way you go, I don't think. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So I've wrapped the tippet around the tippet five times. The tag has gone around the running part of the tippet five times. I adjust so I can see my loops. And the next trick is you've got a double loop here. You're going to go through the double loop, providing the material will allow you. You're going to go through. Just ignore the man, ignore the man behind the curtain for just one second, please. Okay. So you're going to go through the double loop. And that's going to create a new loop. You're going to go through the new loop. All right. Again, how did I do that? I made a double loop. I wrapped five times. I'm going to go through the double loop. And then, once I'm through the double loop, I'm going to go back and through the new loop. Just like that. And then you cinch it down. All right. Again, wet it off camera, and then cinch it down. Now, this whole thing came apart on me, but that's just, again, a function of the thread. Once it's done, it's a nice, tight, and extremely strong loop, a knot. Now, as I was cinching, it came out of one of the loops. Normally, it won't do that with tippet material. I'm pretty sure that's a function of this, this um, glitter yarn that I am using. I hope that helped. 
um, if you have any questions post them in the discussion area or post them in the Facebook chat where I'm going to share this as well. I hope it was helpful. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.